So we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Everybody's going to take the time to watch this. My name is Nema Lema. I'm privileged to have Judy Kalimau, who's going to introduce herself in a short while. This is the third week of May. So as we had promised, we continue with topics matters, the children's mental health. And today we are going to specifically talk about school and mental health because with all the drama that's happening, there's really a lot to discuss. So before we go further, let me uh, introduce our expert today, and then we'll delve into a discussion. Judy Karibu. Thank you. Uh, Nema, my name is Judy Kamau. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm also a child and adolescent mental psychiatrist. I'm practicing in Nairobi, uh, mainly in private practice. Uh, thank you, Nema. Okay. Well, thank you. And of course, now that's why you are the perfect person because, and I think it's the adolescents who are really, really having a hard time in school. And of course the younger ones, but I think it's the adolescents that we commonly hear about. So, um, what is the uh, relationship between a child's mental health and school? We start from there and then we go, yeah, what's, what is it about? Because I remember when we were studying, I, can, I think maybe there's, okay, I cannot even remember the state of my mental health when I was studying in primary school and secondary school. So uh, these days you hear so many things, you're like, I cannot remember this part of my life. So maybe you can tell us those those things that are happening today, maybe they're not happening in our time. Uh, well, I don't know. Most of us, unless you were unhealthy mentally, you wouldn't... Okay really think about unhealthy mental health as a child or an adolescent. For most, uh, the ones who reflect on that or see uh, challenges or issues are the ones who maybe had um, problems. For okay. most kids, actually, fortunately, are healthy. And we st when we say mental health in itself, good mental health is when a child is able to you know, reach their developmental potential, uh, be able to interact with others, uh, moderate their emotions in a healthy way, uh, have healthy social skills, be able to learn and grasp what is out there. And yeah, basically just like in adults, take uh, life or ha handle stresses when they come their way. Now, for children and adolescents, the stressors mostly will come from school. Okay, of course, there are some from home. So that's mm -hmm. a main relationship with mental health. And mm -hmm. kids spend most of their time in school more than at home, or waking moments in school more than at home. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest, uh, I can say, is a relationship because most kids or, or adolescents, their challenges will be picked, especially when they start school. Before mm. they start school, some, or if they're not in school, some of their challenges may not be easy, as easily picked. Because mm. in school you're learning, um, interacting with others. Your teacher will report if you're not doing well in class. Your teacher will report if you're you know, keeping isolated, not talking to people. So school is a big part in a child's health or a, ch a child's life, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's so very true. So... Now, as parents, um, are there things that we can pick that maybe our kids are stressed in school? Or just are stressed? Okay, maybe, I don't know. Is there, okay, yeah, are stressed in school? Oh, well, um, yes. So, you, when you feel, when there's a change in how your child used to be, that's one of the telltale signs. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that there's a change maybe maybe in their school performance yeah this is a child who is either average and now they're starting to go to bottom shelf or this was a very high performer and they're now starting to go lower and lower in performance um this is a or child who was you know very social, would have friends over, and then suddenly you're not even seeing any of these friends. Your child is not even talking on the phone to anyone. Um, child doesn't want to go to school and used to very easily want to go to school. There was no challenges there. Um, the teacher keeps complaining. That's also another telltale sign uh, that there might be a problem in school. 
because mm-hmm. teachers are spending time with this person so they will mm-hmm. notice um they will they might tell you they're not doing their homework on time they're fighting other kids the child has suddenly become rude uh, is not responsible they used to be neat they're not as neat anymore we wonder uh is it that you didn't get a house girl or something like that? So yeah. you can notice shifts. Most of the reports you can get from teachers, but some you'll notice even in how the child does their day-to-day activities, especially school. Mm. Right? So mm. this kind of thing is a problem, um, might be a problem at school. However, all those things I've also said, mm. let pick up a problem at home. They only signify that all is not okay with yeah. this person. Okay. So that's when okay. you dig is when you find out is the main problem in school or is the main problem at home or maybe it's just social peers but mm. those tells you clients will just say that all is not okay mm. this person was here now they are starting to come here or they mm. were probably social now they just withdrawn not talking to people so mm. yeah i would say that when you see some unless maybe they say they are obviously being bullied or they also articulate their needs and say the problem is just in school. Um, mm. There is general signs that you have to start getting help to decipher, really. Okay. Um, I remember, okay, last week we did a talk on the family, the, 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 the family as a stress in a child's mental health. Yeah. And I remember I got a message from a mom who has had to change schools because... This, the daughter just came one day and told mom, I don't want to go to this school. So mom, of course, will try force and all that, but she was just crying and of course, eventually they've had to change schools. But then now her question was, the daughter never told her what exactly was happening in school. Uh-huh. Yeah. So she was like, what do I do? And I'm asking you that question. <laughs> what do I do? Like, okay, so... I'm assuming, okay, she's in this, so so this term, they have had to get a new school. So she's imagining, what if next term, something happens again? Will, will they need to move to a different school? Because they don't even know what happened to the previous school. And the daughter is, she's just quiet. She's not saying anything. Um, she's the ideal, yeah. Mm. I think for that... The idea will have to have tried to find out what was the problem before you move yep. the person to school mm-hmm. from one school to another. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a narrative that happens, especially people have just joined from one. Yeah. Wait one second up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Half of them want to move schools. Uh, yeah. school, it's a transitional space. Maybe if, let's go with high school or your transition. Mm-hmm high school mm-hmm. it's a traditional space you're making new friends you're getting to learn both subjects all those things yeah so the courses can be very varied mm-hmm. yeah. how can be bullied and all those things mm-hmm. if you can be able to find out the issue before you move the child to school mm-hmm. you might find yourself moving this child from one school to another until the cows come home sometimes it's not the environment yeah. Sometimes it's the person. So low self-esteem. When maybe one child says something and this child takes it very personally, um, or maybe they're having maybe some ideas of reference, or they're maybe just not okay settling. They have social anxiety, all yeah. those things. So you see, personal thing. So even if I move from one school and take it to the other school, I haven't changed much about your social yeah. self-esteem, I haven't changed much about your outlook to life, I haven't mm. changed much about your sensitivity to criticism, mm. things like that. Mm. Um, so it might have been best, although now they've already done it, it might mm. have been best to find what was the problem. Mm. It might have been a serious problem. Bullying is, uh, especially schools are not very responsive, I will usually say they are, a parent can have an option of moving the child. Mm. If they are obviously maybe there's a very high turnover of teachers um, mm. beyond the child control. Sometimes you can think about it, either mm. talk to the school or move. But there mm. are times, especially for adolescents in that space, mm. they are going through a lot of adjustments. So you're moving your child from one school to another where they'll have to go and adjust again. Mm. 
for this mom, I will say keep talking to your daughter. You can take her for therapy or try and figure it out even if it's now so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Yeah. It if it's uh, yeah. maybe something else, yeah. Or it might have been maybe something she was bullied for real and then she that happens again. You don't want that to happen. You want to empower this child with skills and how to cope in such situations. So if if that happens then yeah, so for now it's not it's not that it's late. They can still go and take their daughter to get some help and see yeah. what's going on they can do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think I'll tell her that. Now what are the common reasons why someone will have issues in school? I know you've said bullying and not being able to take criticism positively. What yeah. are the others? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. Uh, reasons are endless. Um, yeah. From first of all, it will depend on. Um, sometimes I always look at the developmental age also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can start with the age of the child, things like that. Mm -hmm. There are many things that can happen in a developmental trajectory. Mm -hmm. Very. Um, we have what we sometimes call neurodevelopmental disorders okay. where you have a learning or an intellectual disability. Okay. For that, already you're not able to grasp what yeah. you're being. Yeah. Mm. Or you know par with your peers. Mm. So that's already a, a challenge for this person yeah. or this child. Mm. They're not they're not able to grasp what is taught mm. to a problem. Or they may have some reading challenges, not even now an intellectual disability where they are intelligent but letters and numbers may just not make sense to them yeah so for these two either you your self-esteem might go down for someone who has a learning disability being called upon to read in class and things like that may yeah. be a challenge and they may give up very easily yeah, yeah. So it's sometimes good to screen as early as possible if your child has certain challenges mm -hmm. or a child who has a a, a, let's go with a mental disorder. Yeah, mm. they have depression, which um, alters their concentration, their focus, their mood is low. They are not able to follow through on what is going on or tasks, mm. or something like ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, where they are not able to pay attention. Uh, they procrastinate or they, they don't just submit assignments. They are impulsive. Uh, they may hit out without knowing or say or black things or so they mm -hmm. appear rude. So teachers will not really yeah, sometimes yeah. 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 The don't like and also their peers don't like. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so in your hyperactivity, kids actually don't want to play with you. So you feel isolated and all that. Yeah. So it brings on to your problems. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a severe illness like schizophrenia. So where you may hear voices or you may start having bizarre behavior and it's not that you're pretending this is actually an illness uh you may hear voices so all this disrupt and you may have bizarre behavior so you're not grasping so that's now part of mental disorders or developmental challenges the other things now are now when you look at the environment the child is in yeah. um, currently with the numbers of students in, we have in schools, especially public schools, the child mm. is somewhere. So if your child is not an aggressive student or up there, the yeah. teacher might even know their name properly. Um, if you're teaching a class of 70, uh, although I marvel at the ability of teachers to remember people's names, if you're teaching a class of 70 yeah. and you're remembering all of those people, so someone might get lost somewhere, especially if they're very shy, they don't interact. Mm. Like, um, the way the teacher teach or the personalities of the teachers um, mm. school environment uh, where discipline and mass or shaming yeah, mm. being bullied so when you say shaming it can even come from the teachers some is deliberate, some it's not comparing this child to others uh, making a child start in, stand in the front of the school because they have not performed very well that in itself is shaming creates a very negative environment yeah. Um, you, I mentioned earlier being bullied by other kids. So indirectly, teachers can bully. That's what I was talking about shaming without even yeah. thinking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, 
sometimes the types of disciplines that are there in the school, corporal punishment, and um, um, there are times no boundaries with corporal punishment. We've seen parents take schools to court because of injury. So that's no longer punishment, that's child abuse at some point. Um, lists are endless. So the school environment, I think there are various things that can touch home from fellow peers, yeah, how you interact you if they're bullying you or if you're having you know or you're feeling shunned to how mm -hmm. the teachers to the school policies in themselves uh when a school doesn't have very clear policies on bullying and things like that child is more vulnerable nowadays mm -hmm. we have policies uh the people who are bullying you are cyber bullying you and it's your peers mm -hmm. so environment plays a big role um mm -hmm. In how oh. not child's mental health or the um the child themselves yeah. Mm. yeah so so now this child comes home and then they tell you okay oh, mom or dad i do not want the school x and yeah remember the story of sam cook the son who had a confrontation with the dad and he never wanted to go back to school so i'm imagining uh, myself in that situation how do you how do you balance between a child being defiant like it's just the teenage hood showing up because mm -hmm. actually this child is having an actual mental issue based on whatever you have just said how how do we balance those two well it's a tough balance especially in an adolescent um mm -hmm. in some age groups there is normal defiance um ages of two and three our children will always be no refuse mm. you have to justify why 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 no no yeah. no i don't want i don't want i don't so yeah. uh, it is um defiance is there mm. and so let's face it i think um most kids at some point in their life will have some form of disobedience mm. whether they yeah. pick something in or they yeah. will um, do something hiding they're always small, small yeah. of defiance that happen in day-to-day -day activities. Even at work, people will always disobey one or two rules, sometimes yeah. deliberately, or cover yeah. their rules. Yeah? Mm. The problem will come in, um, we'll always ask ourselves, how often is this happening? Um, does it cause significant impairment or significant problems? Mm. Yeah. And um, especially with the family or social interactions with others and activities or work or even yeah. school load. So, mm -hmm. for example, where you're just oppositional, you're being told to do something and your answer is always no or I don't want to, I don't feel like. How often is this happening? So, if you're mm -hmm. seeing this happening over and over, maybe over, and defiance is, um, you say defiance, that's just refusal to obey. Uh, yeah. Rules. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to have to see how often does this happen. If it's a one or two occasions, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you might not say it's very significant. But mm -hmm. if it's happening all the time, and this is a constant report, uh, you know, and then is it happening everywhere? Schools are complaining, your child is not listening. Home, you're having problems as a parent because your authority is always being shaken. It's always mm -hmm. an argument to do. A task even like chores like take your dishes to the sink or something like that or um and how is it affecting your school life are your grades starting to drop are you getting into a lot of trouble in school are you almost being suspended or expelled so now that's significant yeah um we also look at where is this happening if this is happening in school and also happening at the home then that's that's quite significant you can have mild defiance where you only have small, small problems at home. Yeah. Mm. Maybe the house girl or people familiar to you is the one are the ones you disobey. But mm. if you have this happening at home and at school, then that's a challenge. Mm. Um, but for most, if it's very significant, um, you may have to talk to your child or you you give an example of someone just suddenly refusing and determined to refuse school. Yeah. If it's one off occasion. If you've been having problems coming, yeah, then mm -hmm. we can only there was a 
problem that we had started noticing. But okay. if it's one time someone comes out of the blues and just says, I'm not going to school, you'll also wonder as a parent, then there's a problem. Yeah. 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 Try and investigate. Why? Yeah. Sit down with your child and ask why. Then give me a reason. Um, if you don't give me a reason, then you may end up having to go to school. Yeah. You have oh. Mm. Okay, reason and just using it and take someone where you confidently you can in confidence tell them what's really happening. Mm. So there's I wouldn't classify all of them as a bad thing, but some are red flags. Mm. Mm. Out of the blue, yeah. If it's mm. building on and building on and building on. So sometimes parents and parents we observe fast and see where is this going. Mm. If you I don't want to go to school today. So even mm. if you're not going to school. And then mm. I say, okay, then we stay home. Mm. <laughs> you don't have to school. Yeah. Then yeah. First, first, we always push. Then why? Um, okay, if you're not sick, I can't feel a fever. Mm. Go to but then mm. if you think this is always happening, then you mm. have to start asking, why is mm. this happening? Is it only my child? Talk mm. to the teachers. They might have an idea, and the teachers may talk to you to the child's peers. Mm. An explanation why. Yeah, mm. you may have to investigate first to decide whether this is just my child's being naughty, or it's just it's a very significant problem. Okay, all right. And uh, how do we discipline them? Because I know, like the way you would. Uh... Okay, is it? Is it... For example, you are talking to this, like you said, a toddler. That period of time where they always have to tell you no, why, why, why. Everything you have to justify why you have to, they have to do what you're telling them to do. Yeah. To a teenager who is now 13, 14, 15, yeah. and you tell them something, they still being, they are being defiant. Whether, yeah, they are being defiant. So how, how best do we handle this? How do we discipline? Because we have to discipline them. Is that true? First of all, we have to discipline them. <laughs> yeah, you have to discipline. Otherwise, someone else will run your home. Yes. Let's, yes. Yes. Let's, yeah. let's first read. What is the role of a parent? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's supposed to, you know, provide an environment of optimum growth, uh, so that they build up a child who's able to interact socially, uh, doesn't get problems with, you know, future able to learn mm. um, like that mm -hmm. and it's also your do duty as a parent to also act as a teacher your mm. molding person yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. to someone who would be respectable easy to talk to able to do their day-to-day -day responsibilities interact with others mm. um, in the future be able to handle stress hold down a job look mm. after themselves yeah mm. So your duty as a parent is also to correct where mistakes are being made. Yeah. yeah. You're molding mm. this person. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, if there are no if anyone, if if you're a parent and there's no discipline or boundaries that are set out, mm. you still end up running the home. Mm. Yeah. They're still young. They are not making the best of decisions. You have to guide them in that regard. Mm -hmm. So if it's if they've made mistakes, I think number one, start having creating environments where you can have an open dialogue. Mm. Uh, I always tell uh, people that parents uh, between a parent and a child. So a child can say, "My parent is my best friend." Yes, but a parent should not say, "My child is my best friend." <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, okay, makes sense. Parent, yeah, parent is supposed to discipline, but mm -hmm. still have that open space of talking to my child. So, mm -hmm. they get into trouble out there, or something bad happens, they're able to come and talk to you. They know oh. mom is a disciplinarian, but she's very protective of me. Mm -hmm. I think six, she can do some, she can, yeah, oh, can, can have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mom is someone I can reach out to. Or my dad is someone I can easily talk to. Mm. So I say, number one, have dialogue. I mean, if it's okay. a very child, first tell them what you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. Tell them. Or if they don't know that something is wrong. 
mm. out or lashing out and the person never knew they were doing something wrong in the first place will leave them confused and wondering what just happened yeah. mm. that other than dialogue uh always have it out there that um rewards uh, as in bad behave behavior has consequences good mm-hmm. behavior rewarded mm. but behavior to be punished yeah mm. punishment varies so when you're an adult when you're an adolescent um so when kids are younger spanking goes round things like um mm. is frowned upon uh, mm. for young uh, for older adolescents if you're thinking about it uh, you have a 13 year old taller than you heavier than you to start spanking as in how is that going it becomes a fight <laughs> some some circumstances are just uh, they become interesting anyway i'm not saying that person should i'm i'm not saying no 100% to that but i'm just saying sometimes it starts looking ridiculous actually mm. someone who has a tall teenager mm. how do you spank this person mm. Mm. So now look at rewards and punishments other things withdraw mm. you know things that they like give warnings yeah, mm, yeah. of course it depends on how grievous the offense is mm. yeah. if it's not tidying up by yourself or things like that but if it's running away from school those ones you act immediately mm. um give warnings have dialogue mm. you've been a parent you know what your child can do without and what your child mm. really clings on to mm. what you not be happy was taken away from them and what your child would not really care about mm. so you can withdraw privileges i always say a phone is a privilege it's mm. not a right and i'm giving you a phone i'm giving it to you and that's the thing we never do sometimes as parents we just buy you a phone yeah Uh, this phone is communicating socializing a little bit if you if i and you're supposed to use it between this time and this time if i find you're not using it properly it's mine all property in this house is mine i yeah. can take it away <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. those things guided out so if your child enjoys a lot of tv or things like that for that time you can withdraw that you can mm. privileges and your house is full of things that you can withdraw but don't withdraw basic needs don't say your child will sleep hungry no yeah well that's what mothers a long time ago used to do yeah, they used to do that people have slept hungry and by the way even now sometimes people still do that yeah those are basic needs as much as yeah um, phones are there no tv um go to your room but make sure that that room doesn't have a playstation or what not or what not um, um, is um ground the person you can't leave the house you have to read or whatever so if they read in culture the punishment will also you know develop yeah. as well um kids who enjoy playing um, you very know, young kids time out does work a minute by the age uh, so um, to stand two minutes to long for some kids yeah, yeah. Mm. that we have to have is consistency where mm. if you're doing the same mistake today i will punish you tomorrow i just decide i'm not even the child gets confused mm. so say, last time you didn't punish me maybe i can get away with it even today yeah, yeah. parents also ought to agree mm. you find parents on different pages yeah um, so that's from yeah even one parent calling out the other sometimes in front of the child so yeah. it, it makes this child even more defiant not to know what boundaries are what disciplines are so okay. when parents are punishing or doing something they should be on the same page there's always okay. a soft parent the one the child will go to when they really want something compared to, moms are more strict so moms yeah. are either the last one mm-hmm. after that has already been asked but when yeah. it comes rules and uh, boundaries parents should be on the same page sometimes mm. uh maybe with substance use the mom is the only one who's running around with this child the father has never even either come for clinic or um them going to school when people are called yeah. people should be on the same page so, and kids read this that's a thing they do they do. 
they're not in a cocoon and they're not idiots. They, and they can manipulate behavior. They can manipulate the two of you if they notice you guys are never on the same page. Yeah. You know, the mom did this. Uh, what do you think? And a parent who just, the mom is even disrespected. Or uh, vice versa. Your father, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, but maintaining accept and responsive, responsive to the needs, uh, as I said, don't deny basic needs. Punishments, well, it's an array. As long as, yeah, but also uh, reward or praise positive behavior. Yeah, people should be on the pain page, but praise if good behavior happens, offer mm. praise. Don't always focus on negative, negative, negative behavior. As yeah. your parents, you also want to build this person's self-esteem. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. they as positively as possible. Mm. Yeah. And I think I think it's natural. Do I say it's natural? Like looking for the positive, it's, it's almost a very intentional. It's something that you really, really need to stop and think about it. Because most of us are programmed to only, only notice the negative things. Even as adults who are in a relationship, you're more likely to complain of the negative things rather than even praising of the good things that this person does. So as parents, I think we really, really need to do that more intentionally. 